DNA. But before we do that, we want to talk about why DNA is so awesome. So let me give you a not so real world example. If you've ever seen the movie Jurassic Park, you know it has the storyline where some scientists find a mosquito trapped in amber. Now, the idea is this mosquito had once fed on a dinosaur, so it had dinosaur blood inside it. The idea being that it had a molecule then that was in this blood known as DNA. And they used the DNA to clone and create dinosaurs. Now, there are some unrealistic things in this, but the idea of cloning is not unrealistic because actually it can and does occur. Say, for example, you wanted to clone an iguana. I don't know why I picked iguana. I think I just like the name iguana. Well, if you wanted to clone an iguana, you would need to have a reptile egg cell, and you would need to take the DNA out of that reptile egg cell. And then you would need to put the DNA of the iguana into that reptile egg cell. So basically, you took the DNA out, you made it kind of like an empty slate, and you put the organism you wanted to clone, the iguana, you put its DNA inside that egg cell. That egg cell is basically now programmed to develop into that iguana, that organism. It would need to be implanted somewhere so that it can develop. Now, keep in mind that it still would hatch into a baby iguana, but over time, that iguana would develop, and there'd be some environmental conditions that might make it look slightly different than the original because the environment can affect how um, the organism will look and also how genes function. But the iguana would be a clone, an identical copy, because the genetic material, that DNA, would be the same. There are a lot of ethical debates with cloning or really any biology topic that involves DNA because DNA is the most important molecule with life. It controls all of your traits. Your cells can't function without it. How tall you are, what color your eyes are, what color your hair is, or even if you're at risk for certain diseases like heart disease or cancer, some of that can be found in the DNA. Your DNA is just incredibly important. One thing too that students sometimes don't understand is that all of the cells in your body, every single cell, has your entire DNA code, each of them. So, you know, if you've ever watched those shows, CSI or Law and Order, you know how the criminal can leave behind a hair sample or a, a skin sample or a blood sample, and they can link that and find the criminal sometimes if they get a good sample. The idea is even leaving behind um, a hair that has hair follicle cell, you can get the entire DNA code because every cell has all of your DNA. One thing to point out, even though all of your cells all contain your entire DNA code, that DNA is not turned on all the time in all of your cells. Let me give you an example. A skin cell is not producing digestive enzymes. That would be nasty. The digestive enzyme, even though it's coded for in the DNA, and your skin cells, like all cells, have all of your DNA, that is turned off in your skin, which is a good thing. Well, in maybe a stomach cell, that would be turned on, it'd be activated. We call that gene regulation, the ability to turn genes on and off. So let's talk about the structure of DNA. First of all, DNA is a type of nucleic acid. And if you remember the biomolecules, remember how the biomolecules included carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are the type of biomolecule that DNA falls under. And like all biomolecules, there are building blocks called monomers. The building block of a nucleic acid is a nucleotide. Okay, so I know they're kind of bombarding you with vocabulary, but it's really important to understand the parts of a nucleotide because otherwise you don't know what DNA is made of. And if you don't understand what DNA is made of, you won't understand how it functions. And if you don't understand how it functions, well, that's going to be really difficult when we really start understanding how we work. Before I get into the three parts of a nucleotide, I do want to point out the name of DNA. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic 
acid. That's what the Na part is, nucleic acid. And that D, that deoxyribo, that's for deoxyribose, which is a sugar. So nucleotides have three parts, and one of them is a sugar called deoxyribose. The next thing is a phosphate. The phosphate is involved with the sugar in helping hold the DNA structure together. We sometimes call DNA as having a sugar phosphate backbone. But the most important part of the nucleotide is the base, because the bases actually code for traits. So as far as the bases go, again, those are the important parts that control your traits. They really directly code for your traits. There are four bases in DNA, and a lot of times they'll just use the initials, A, T, G, and C. The A is for adenine, the T is for thymine, the G is for guanine, and the C is for cytosine. There's a really nice little saying that can help you remember which one goes with which because these bases actually pair in a correct pattern. And if you don't have them paired correctly, or maybe they get mismatched, that's actually what we call a mutation, which we'll get to a little bit later. But here's the little way you can remember it. Apples on the tree. That tells you that A for apples, T for tree, A and T always go together. And then the other little verse is cars in the garage. That can help you remember that the base C always goes with the base G. And so you kind of know how they match. And DNA pairs this way. DNA has two strands. So there's nucleotides running up one side and there's nucleotides running up the other side. The bases are what pair in the middle. They're usually held together by hydrogen bonds. The DNA is also twisted in something we call a double helix shape. And so as that strand, the strands of the DNA is twisted around, the bases should be all in the center. The sugar and phosphate make up the sides. So let's review what we talked about today. We talked about the importance of DNA, that it's found in the nucleus of cells, that all of your cells, every one of them, they contain all of your DNA, although the DNA is not always turned on completely in all the cells. It depends on what the cell's function is, whether it's going to be turned on or off. That's called gene regulation. We talked about DNA is a type of nucleic acid, and that nucleic acids, which is a biomolecule, are made of nucleotides. And nucleotides contain three parts, a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. It's the base that codes for your traits. And we talked about which bases match can help remember that apples in the tree, cars in the garage to give you a little nice way to remember it. Remember, we really have to understand DNA in order to understand how our own bodies function. Sometimes it feels like DNA gets all the credit. Yes, DNA is very important. It codes for your traits. But sometimes what gets left out is how important RNA is. Because without RNA, you actually couldn't get that genetic message out to your cells so that they can start producing proteins. RNA is a very important biomolecule, just as important as DNA. So what we're going to do right now is compare and contrast RNA with DNA. This is really important to understand because if we don't understand it, we can't understand protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is the process that gets your DNA to code for the proteins that make up so many of your traits. So let's talk about DNA and RNA. They both sound kind of similar, and actually they are both nucleic acids, which are a type of biomolecule. But let's go ahead and compare and contrast them real quickly. So DNA, it stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. The deoxyribose is a sugar, and nucleic acid is the type of biomolecule that it is. DNA is also double-stranded. That means it has two strands, and it's in a double helix shape, also known as a twisted ladder. We also have mentioned the bases in DNA. Remember, the bases are really important because they actually code for the traits. So the bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And they go together like this. If we remember the little mnemonic device, apples in the tree, that helps you remember A goes with T, and car in the garage, so C goes with G. Also, DNA is found in the nucleus. So those are all things about DNA. RNA, on the other hand, stands for ribonucleic acid. 
the ribo that's actually part of ribose which is a sugar so just like DNA had deoxyribose RNA has ribose they both contain a sugar RNA also has four bases remember in DNA they were A and T C and G well in RNA you have all the same bases except for one there is no T otherwise known as thymine there's no T in RNA instead it's a U the U is for uracil so you can't remember apples in the tree for RNA that's not gonna work because there's no T so instead try remembering apples under so it's kinda like they're under a tree <laughs> A for adenine and U for uracil they go together also there's still C and G remember cars in the garage that helps you remember cytosine goes with guanine so the bases are pretty much the same in RNA except for the uracil instead of thymine RNA also will start out in the nucleus but it's gonna travel out of the nucleus it's going to help deliver the message there are actually three types of RNA but don't worry because what they stand for it really helps give away what they do and let me give you an example so the first type of RNA is messenger RNA and the actual acronym that you'll see for it is mRNA messenger RNA and its job is to carry a message based off of the DNA second type of RNA is called the transfer RNA or abbreviated tRNA and its job is to transfer the message and then we have rRNA that stands for ribosomal RNA and so kind of like it sounds it actually is a component of the ribosome if you remember back in cells we've talked about how ribosomes make protein and it's a very important thing in protein synthesis obviously ribosomes are going to be involved because that's what we're doing we're making protein now that you know the difference between RNA and DNA you're completely ready to explore the concept of protein synthesis we have another